It's okay. Oh, and by, uh, you may proceed. Okay. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I rise to second the special motion for the removal from office by impeachment of His Excellency Rigati Gachagua, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. Honorable Speaker, in opening, I would like to thank the Honorable Mutuse for the courage and valor in tabling and moving this motion. Honorable Speaker, in his address yesterday, the Deputy President called Parliament and this National Assembly a theater of the absurd, a house of ridicule, a house which processes trash. That's what he said about this Parliament. Honorable Speaker, just like the Deputy President, I'm a student of literature, having been taught by the late Wasambo Were and the late Professor Imbuga. In the definition, Honorable Speaker, of the theater of absurd, a theater of absurd is without plot, is directionless, is less with stupidity, lacks thoughts, lacks coherence of ideas, it is irrational and logical. If you have read the book or by Samuel Beckett, the book by Samuel Beckett, you will know that in that book called Waiting for Godot, that he actually said, this parliament is as good as that literature. Honorable Speaker, I sit in this parliament and many of you do that. Members, are we a theater of absurd? No. Members, are we directionless? No. Members, are we stupid? No. That's what the deputy president characterized this parliament, that we are stupid, we are directionless, and we are people who are very useless to this country. Honorable Speaker, a person of the stature of a deputy president who can say such things about this chamber does not deserve to continue to become the deputy president of the republic. Honorable Speaker, what is the theater of absurd, Honorable Speaker, is when the deputy president demands that for, for the eight million votes, for the eight million votes from Mount Kenya, he should be paid 2,000 shillings translating to 16 billion shillings so that he can bring peace to this country. Honorable Speaker, that is the theater of absurd. That is the theater of absurd, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Rigathi Gachagua has commented impeachable offenses as provided in Article 150, 1 and 2. He has grossly violated the Constitution and has committed crimes under national and international law, as has been ably demonstrated by the mover of the motion. Honorable Speaker, looking at the evidence provided by the mover of the motion, Honorable Speaker, that is enough to impeach the Deputy President, and he must stand impeached by the end of the day today. Honorable Speaker, Article 131E of the Constitution says the president is a symbol of national unity. Read together with Article 147.1, that the deputy president is the principal assistant of the president and shall deputize the president in the execution of the functions of the presidency. Honorable Speaker, for this to happen, there must be harmony at the top in spite of how they were elected to office. His shareholding utterances, and we saw the utterances on the TV here, as demonstrated by the mover, on the shareholding. This ensures that there's no harmony at the president's. But what the president, the deputy president wants to do is to balkanize this country. Balkanize the country where, like in George Orwell's animal farm, there are other people who are more equal than others. And as a parliament, we must refuse to buy into the theory of the Deputy President, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, the Deputy President has taken himself and wants to be a tribal king of the Murima, ready to break the country, 
sources of disunity for his own political gain. And this chamber, today, by the end of the day, we must have no deputy president who wants to balkanize this uh, country. Honorable Speaker, the office of the deputy president is a high office as established under Article 130. The authority of his office must be exercised within the provisions of Article 10.2, which anchors the principle of national unity. As co, the holder of this office must exercise this article at the highest level ever. Honorable Speaker, as Deputy President, he must be, be beyond reproach. Like Caesar's wife, Honorable Speaker, like Caesar's wife, he must be above any form of suspicion, any form of suspicion beyond reproach. But Honorable Speaker, the utterances and the actions of the Deputy President brings his reputation to disrepute because he has sown sort of disunity and he has taken a trajectory that is likely to bring balkanization of this country. For that, Honorable Speaker, we cannot continue to have a Deputy President who cannot uphold the oath of his office, and therefore, Rigathi Gashagwa must go. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, if you look at the story of uh, Pompey, the wife of Julius Caesar, you realize that although he had been accused, she had been accused of sacrilege, but the court acquitted her. But Julius Caesar actually divorced Pompey, not because of what she had been accused of, but because there was suspicion that he could have done something like that. And on that, only on that, Honorable Speaker, as a chamber, as a parliament, we have the authority and right to say, this guy has brought himself to disrepute, he has gone below, and he has portrayed himself as a man who cannot be trusted with the position of a deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, and therefore, Rigathi Gashagwa must go. Yeah. Honorable Speaker, Article 131.2, C and D gives the President and his deputy the responsibility to promote and ensure the unity of the nation and promote respect for the diversity of the people and communities. Honorable Speaker. The Deputy President has presided over the politics of exclusion and has championed the rights and resource allocation to only one region of this country. Has the Deputy President exhibited the values of national unity and diversity? No, Honorable Speaker. He has not. He does not embrace that value, a key value of the Constitution. And therefore, this deputy president must remain impeached because for him, the vocabulary of diversity and unity does not exist in his vocabulary. On that premise, honorable speaker, the deputy president, Geoffrey Rigathi Gashagwa, must go by end of today. Honorable, honorable speaker, Article 4, 5, and 6 of the Constitution read together with the third paragraph of the Constitution of Kenya, <laughs> reinforces the fact that Kenya is one united, indivisible state. In the same breath, Honorable Speaker, the Constitution establishes the structures of counties as units of sharing resources. However, the Deputy President has established an unlawful and constitutional structure of the country as a structure of sharing national resources where we have now a new structure of shareholders and non-shareholders, honorable speaker. That is sacrilege. We cannot establish another structure of resource allocation apart from the one provided in the Constitution. But now we have a new structure where those who are shareholders in the country get more resources and those that are not shareholders don't get resources. For that new structure that he's trying to establish in this country, the Deputy President Rigathi Kajagwa must go. Honorable Speaker, there was a time in this country, Honorable Speaker, if you allow me to say this, and I will ask you to add me a few minutes more to say this, that there was a time in this country when the Deputy Chief Justice, the Honorable Nancy Baraza, was bundled out of office because of impropriety. 
because of an issue that Kenyans thought was not proper. Nasi Baraza, just pinching the nose of someone. And she was bundled out of office, the high office of the Deputy Chief Justice of this country. That's what happened, Honorable Speaker. Just pinching her nose. And she was bundled out of office. But here we have a deputy president who has committed sacrilege trying to balkanize this country. A deputy president who has called people names. A deputy president who has called a member of parliament a prostitute. A deputy president who has amassed wealth that cannot be accounted for. For that honorable speaker, just like Nancy Baraza was bundled out of office, the deputy president must also be bundled out of office because of that impropriety. Honorable Speaker, we saw the, the mover has ably demonstrated to us how he took on a judge. But Honorable Speaker, it is not just a judge, it is a female judge, Honorable Speaker. Probably he attacked this judge because she was a woman, a lady judge. A lady. A lady judge. Where is the, the place of women judges or women in this country? If we have a deputy president who has no respect for other female or lady leaders in this country. Honorable Speaker, for the abuse on a, on a woman judge, a lady judge, the deputy president must go. Honorable Speaker, I know my time is running out, but I want to say this in closing. Honorable Speaker, I want to say this. When you ever face an impeachment motion, Honorable Speaker, you'd rather have a rich dead brother who you can shield yourself with. We saw what uh, the deputy president tried to do yesterday. But I want to tell him that Kenyans are clever and they read through what he wanted to do yesterday. And they will not buy it. It does not sell. It won't be bought. We know who he is. We know. Give him one minute. Finish up. Finish up. He's my friend. Yes, Honorable Speaker. We know what he tried to do yesterday, but we can't buy it, Honorable Speaker, and therefore, Grigathi Gashagwa must stand impeached at the end of the day. Honorable Speaker, we are in this boat together. We have one character in this boat called Kenya who is trying to rock it from within. He's trying to break this country. In that event, Honorable Speaker, we have a duty, if we're in that boat, to remove this one person from this boat and toss him into the high seas so that everybody is safe. And that is the duty that we must do today. And I want to convince even those that still have doubts of whether this guy should continue. I want to convince them we are safer as Kenya without Rigathi Gashagwa as deputy president of this country. We are safer as a country. The northeastern region is safer. The coast is safer. The Nyanza is safer. And all parts of Kenya are safer. Honorable Speaker, and Kenya is safer without Rigathi Gashagwa as deputy president. Mr. Speaker, we do not want uh, Rigathi uh, Gashagwa to resign. We want this house, which he has called the House Theatre of Absurd, Honorable Speaker, to impeach him so that he knows that he needs to respect institutions also. Lack of respect of institutions, Honorable Speaker, is sacrilegious for the person of the stature of a Deputy President. For that, Honorable Speaker, for not respecting this parliament, this parliament and the Senate must impeach one Geoffrey Rigathi Gashwagwa tonight and we send him home so that he knows his place in this country. For those many remarks, I second Honorable Speaker and ask other members to support this question. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Order, Honorable Members on their feet, take your seats.